Uh, hello again. Today we will be taking a look at our microcode and how I have uh, organized the instructions and how I have programmed the e the e prompts. I uh, will start here on on our code. Firstly, we had to define here which e prompt we're programming since we have three to fit our microcode and well we will just have to then program one by one and selecting here from one to two two zero one two um, then we have the programming tasks i have divided the instructions into the move instructions the load instructions the store and the alu instructions and also on one special alu instructions which we can also uh, choose to program or not. Of course, the four main instructions here are mandatory, and this last one is uh, optional. I'll, I'll get into that when we explain uh, e each of these groups of instructions. But uh, the reason it's, uh, it is uh, done separately is because of Arduino Nano's lack of RAM we cannot program all of the instructions at the same time so we could program actually all the main instructions at the same time but the special instructions would have to be done after and other options that we have is to erase and dump the EEPROM and also this uh, check coverage um, instruction here just to for uh, debugging, uh, not necessary to use anymore. Okay, now we get finally to the coding part, and I have started here by just organizing uh, which outputs of the EEPROMs are connected to which uh, program line. And we, uh, as we can see here, from Address from from data from the, from the first EEPROM the EEPROM number zero data line zero to two we have the multiplexed input registers from data three to five the multiplexed output registers and then from the sixth six and seven line the memory address register in then micro timer clear and the eight bit here is already on the next EEPROM we have uh, the, our ALU uh, control lines the carry in ALU in halt S0 S1 S2 S3 S4 then we jump to the next EEPROM number 16 here is the data 0 from the uh, EEPROM number 2 the 30 prom EEPROM number 2 RAM out RAM in program counter out and program memory and then we have to define how we are going to to address these uh, EEPROM outputs and I have started by the multiplexed inputs the way the multiplexers uh, work is that I have connected for example to for the A register in the, the lines I should input to the multiplexer 110 and in that way this instruction register in is 000 and in reality 1111 you see here is an output that is not connected anywhere so if 1111 corresponds to no output selected I'm going to be working with the inverse of everything. So to make it easier for us to OR, then OR after the signals to complete the control word. So for, for all the registers here, I'm, I'm using the, the inverse of what in reality is connected to the, to the multiplexer. And the same goes for the multiplexed outputs and here it is maybe clearer why I have done this is because this multiplexer is, is on, the, on the next address bits here so the first address bits, the real ones they are always supposed to be 111 one, one. 
so nothing is selected on the on the first multiplexer and on the pro pro programming here I have me using the, the inverse of that so 0 0 0 so it would be then possible to OR the both of the parts of the signal and then invert it back to write the control the real control word oh, I hope I could explain this but uh, yeah, nevertheless that's the the, the main pur purpose of using the inverse of the, of the words is to be able to OR both of, of these parts of, this, of the control word and then, and, and then get to the real control word that we need. So these are the, the integers that correspond to each of the multiplexed inputs and outputs when we need to address them. And then we have this, uh, this range here that defines the the the, the six bits of uh, of outputs that we will have to then flip before uh, after we write the control word. So then we flip and, and finally we get to the real uh, control that we need. For the direct signals is uh, way simpler. We have the 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 words and then we just shift our bits to one position to the left to say well here is the bit that controls this uh, function and for the multiplexer address lines I have commented all of them because uh, we will need to, to flip them all at the same time and also we will have to build this part of the of the control word all, to all at the same time with this uh, two uh, just these two parts of the code here but for the and I left them here just for for reference but for the direct uh, signals it's just a matter of oring uh, one one part to the other very easy and even for the for the signals that are inverted I have I have this this the sign here to so that we will remember later on when the control word is ready that we'll have to invert the bits on these positions to get to the to the real control word. The same goes here for the LU signals, the S0 to S4 that here I've left as a logic function select that will also build with uh, another separate uh, control word here the S4 to S0 words and I left them uh, here just to, as a reminder but uh, it's commented out uh, since we're talking about this part of the of the LU words and uh, what what do they mean well uh, they were built using the 74 LS 181 data sheet and we can actually take a look here uh, to the to this to the spreadsheet here and what I've done is just to encode S0 to S4 in the case of the logic function whatever was in the data sheet to the function that we need to implement so increment uh, shift left subtract add uh, exclusive or or end not decrease uh, rotate with carry that, that means a uh, rotate that is a shift with carry subtract with carry add with carry zero and one this function here is uh, might seem uh, pointless but it's very useful since our registers don't have a clear uh, pin signal so with this function here with just the one instruction simple instruction we can clear uh, any register the one here is uh, maybe useful to clear the, the stack pointer compare and test and if we then go back to, to our code that, that's what I've, I've, I've written here this, these functions that are there increase a minus b a plus b are here encoded on this for 
bits here, or five bits, one, two, three, four, five bits, yeah, S0 to S4, of course. And then we come to the part of the E prom address of the real the opcode that we're using the instruction from 0 to 7 then as you remember from 8 to 10 or micro time counter then the flags the the encoded flags and the carry flag so that there are 13 bits of addressing to the to all the eproms and then we can write this f function to write uh, the EEPROM address and we'll need for that the opcode as, as, as we discussed right now the carry which is a, a boolean we have a carry or not a flag if we have the flag or not and the timer count as a register definition I have decided to, to, to use 6 bits for, for the register, which is exactly what we need. So RA gets a 0, RB a 1, RC is 2, RD, stack pointer, program counter, and so on. And we have this special uh, last uh, two bits here left that we use for stack pointer increase or decrease that we'll be using for the push and pop instructions as well the call function and immediate operand for our instruction types we we have here uh, four classes of instructions as seen the move instructions are will be encoded as the, the first eight bits of the instruction will be zero zero the load zero one the store one zero and the alu one one but we don't need to 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 put it uh, directly here because anyway the we'll get to that to that the the op the function that defines our opcode is uh, also different for the ALU and we'll get to that the function codes for the ALU are all the functions that we will be implementing to this computer which we just uh, discussed uh, increase shift left subtract etc then we have to to make the the opcode and we have the, here these two functions to build them uh, the opcodes for us and the the main function here for the the majority of the instructions the move load and store instructions uh, will be the two bits of the of this opcode of the will be the instruction class, then the destination register and the source register. For the LU instructions, we we'll use directly here this function code here from the, from the LLU. This this four bits here, and of course the first two bits of the of the instruction will be one one that directly encoded here and the last two bits that we have we use the register but just the registers that begins from that had that had two bits on, on, on them so register A, B, C and D we, we don't have any more room to address other other registers while doing uh, ALU operations and that's a limitation of this arch architecture and also that's why, and we'll get to that later that's why I have some special ALU functions written uh, elsewhere on, on our on our, on our uh, EEPROM space um, now we get here to the small function that will flip the active lows as we discussed as it's necessary it will flip the active lows for the, the, the control words that needs to be flipped and the, these are all the multiplex address range must be flipped the first six bits then of the of the control word and then 
these other ones, that's the memory address register in, macro timer clear, carry in, ALU in, halt and program memory. Then we have this convenient switches just to make programming easier instead of having to always remember what we want to do is this uh, register A out or program counter out and, or in we have this function here that uh, will output or input for any of the register we just have to select the register and uh, it will automatically switch here for the, the one that we want then for the microcode base instructions we always have the fetch cycle. For all the instructions, as you, as you know, begin with the, the fetch cycle. And the first two micro, time, micro times are equal for all of them, which consists of program counter out, memory address register in, and after that, while accessing the program memory, we do memory out, instruction register in, and program counter enable. After this fetch cycle, then only then we are, we will know whatever on was on the on the instruction register and we'll keep on with the with this instruction. And the instruction can be of variable length. So we have here this special functions here that will allow us to write uh, functions of uh, that that uh, consist of uh, either from, from zero steps extra to the fetch instruction uh, the, and, and <laughs> this zero here will be just for the no operation instruction but from uh, one more step or two or three or four steps and we could even have uh, five and six steps more but uh, we don't have currently any instruction that needs all this length then we come to the, to the instructions to, to the um, programming part of the instructions that will finally write whatever the instruction is to the EEPROM and that's uh, the, the way it's done here is because the majority of the instructions don't care for flags so we have to write the same instruction whether we have the flag set uh, or not. So th this first part here of the of the writing just takes uh, a conditional instruction that we already have set whether we have the carry and the flags of course the opcode then the, the microcode itself and which ROM you're writing to. We use this uh, EEPROM address function that we already uh, discussed. We flip the bits and then we call our library the EEPROM, write EEPROM and write to this address whatever the, the, the control word finally was. But to arrive on this write conditional instruction, we have these other two instructions here, these two functions here. And they start with just write instruction which is, would be a, a, a simple instruction and this would transform this simple instruction that has no uh, that has no need to, to check for flags into other sets of instructions that have the, the that have the flags either true or false and then we would need again this is for the for the flags and then for the carry flag we have to do this pass again and say whether the carry was necessary or not for the for the also the cases of flags true and false so we have in, for the same instruction we have to write it four times Finally, we arrive on the, on the instructions themselves. And before I start to, just to, to ex explain a bit here of the, of the code, let's go back to, the, to that spreadsheet. 
And now on this spreadsheet here we have this complete instruction set so that we just uh, know visually what we'll, what we'll have after we have done with this, with this programming. And as I said, the first two bits here are the instruction class and we have starting with 00, zero the move instructions. And then we have the destination and the source um, registers. And normally, uh, we, ha we would have here, for example, a uh, move array to array. And that, since that makes no sense, or that is of no use, we will just encode in this part here the no operation instruction. That's conveniently, ha we will have the code 0000, zero, zero, zero all zeros. Then we have the move uh, whatever register to RA and when we, where we would have a stack pointer increase decrease move to RA which makes no sense we will encode a halt and for the all, all the other instructions of this class we will follow the same the same pattern and when we have move, move whatever register to itself we will just write halt uh, instead of no operation, we just want one no operation um, instruction. We will write halt to this one because also makes no sense move RB to RB. And stack pointer increase decrease to RB also makes no sense, so we also halt and so on until we arrive here on this part of the of the memory where we would have as source the, the registers moving to stack pointer increase decrease which makes also no sense so we will encode here um, on, on this first uh, free uh, instruction we will write the jump the unconditional jump instruction and on this other part here that would be uh, the move whatever is on the register to an immediate upper end uh, we will borrow this space here to write or jump on carry, jump on overflow, jump on zero on negative and jump on zero instruction. And if you remember from our schematics, the way this overflow negative and zero flags are encoded hardware in hardware, it means we will have to for the overflow the multiplexer is expecting a one on the least significant bit of the instruction code for the negative expecting a 1 0 and for the zero flags expecting 1 1 that's why they, they are they are encoded on, on this memory uh, section to the coming to the load instructions we follow the same uh, pattern and here all the instructions are valid we just more or less renamed here the when when we when we are loading from memory a value that had the source the address on the stack pointer we're calling it a pop instruction and so we just renamed here the pop instructions all of them and in case of the program counter, we renamed it as a return instruction from the from the call instruction. In in this sector here, we would have all halt uh, instructions because it makes the, these are instructions that uh, make make no sense normally, which are the the load the the load from uh, stack pointer increase decrease which uh, makes no sense and also load f from an immediate uh, operand also that, that makes uh, no sense and we, I, I have borrowed this space here for this special ALU uh, functions which are which consists of implementing for the stack pointer uh, register all the ALU operations in fact, I think the only ones that are really uh, useful is the uh, stack pointer 0 or stack pointer 1 that will uh, reset 
the stack pointer. The other operations, the value operator, increase, decrease, and whatever, are only useful if we are not using the stack pointer as the stack pointer and wish to, to, to use it as a general purpose register. Maybe some program will benefit from that. And since the space here was blank, I decided to encode it like that. When we arrive here on the store uh, class of instructions, the one zero, then we also have to deal with these uh, instructions that uh, makes no sense and write halt onto them. For example, if we uh, are storing anything uh, from from the, on, on the address pointed by array, for example, we uh, we want to store the contents of the stack pointer increase decrease it makes no sense and also you don't want to store an immediate value that is already stored into RAM so that's uh, both of, of these instructions here are, will be halted as well for all other uh, sources here uh, destinations here, I'm sorry then we are at the push instructions that are these stack pointer increase decrease and then from, from each to each of these uh, registers and in case of the program counter we call this the call instruction and finally we arrive here uh, into the ALU instructions which we'll use because of of uh, address limitation, just the RA to RD registers. And then we will have all that uh, operations we discussed and we will actually fill up all this uh, address space here with the LU operations. So let's, let's go back to the code. So that, that's how we will encode and or all the instructions the move class instructions well it's all commented well commented here for example to, to write the the move instructions uh, we'll make here a, a loop that will loop from the source array to program counter and then an internal loop from our also array to program counter and then we'll write the opcode destination register source register microcode um, just one extra uh, microcode time and we'll do then the destination register in source register out we'll write this instruction and the run, roll number and repeat that until we have written all the instructions for this class and if we want to write for the immediate operands well just We'll just change a little bit the code because the immediate operand comes from the from the RAM, so we have to do uh, program counter route memory address in, then access program memory, etc. I, I won't explain all of this here because uh, it would be very long, and we'll wait. I think it's uh, already um, it's possible to understand just by reading the code. And so I'll just scroll down here. We have the load instructions, which will follow that, that same pattern shown on the on the spreadsheet. The store instructions, the ALU instructions, and finally here the special ALU instructions that are also shown on the spreadsheet that will work only with the stack pointer. And finally, here we get to the part where we will write to the E prompts whatever we want to program. If, if we want to program all the instructions or erase and, and, or dump whatever is, is written there. And well, that's it for this video. I guess it's already very long and not very interesting. So I'll just also leave a link to, the, to this code and feel free to use it if you want. Okay, 
the next on the next video we'll be finally uh, taking a look at our complete or almost complete computer and program something uh, onto its memory and, and see it running.